listen to me when I sing for you this melody to a song I say what I have to say sometimes it's the only thing that helps me through the day so many things on my
thank God for everything that he's done so far. Now it is my happy privilege to turn the service over to the hands of our pastor. Give her a hearty amen as she comes, please. Amen. Amen. Good to be here tonight to worship the Lord. He's been so good to us. He didn't owe us anything, but he still keeps on giving us something. Wouldn't that be nice if you start giving him back? Uh, I want to preach to you tonight coming from 2 Samuel, the 24th, chap 24th chapter. Father, we're grateful today for your blessings, for all that you've done. We glorify you because you're a good God. You loved us more than we ever deserved to be loved. We thank you because you've been so good and so kind. So forgiving. We thank you for it tonight. I pray, God, that you might be glorified in this place. I come against every spirit and every power. God, only you can do it. And I thank you for it. I pray that you work miracles. Save tonight. Bring deliverance to those that are bound. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yes. You know what? There's a lot to be had in the kingdom, but you can't get it unless you do it God's way. That's the only way it's going to work. Listen to this. I'm going to tell you the story because I don't want to read so much. If, if you know that there was a, David was going to, going to battle, and he said, Joab about and said, count and see how many people out there as, it, as if that was the only way God could do something because of that particular thing. Because, okay, if the number's high enough, we know we're going to win. No, if the number is not at all, we're going to win. And that's the thing that angered God is you, you go in and count them. And I talk, I'm the one who put them there. You don't have to see if it's going to work. It always works because God said so. If he told you what to do and how to do it, and if you do it, you're going to have, you're going to have victory every time. There's no getting around it. Listen, I think that too many people shortchange God all over the place. They want a whole lot from him, but they don't want to give him nothing. Now, understand this. Um, David said when he saw the sin that he had committed in counting God's people, he said, Okay, go out and get a census for me. You weren't supposed to do that. He knew that. And Joab said, why would you do this? You know that that's not going to be pleasing to God. You don't have to find out whether God can win a battle or not. Of course he wins, always. So when, when, the, when the Lord brought down the, brought down the judgment, he began to punish the people. What well, David said to the Lord, God, what they haven't did wrong, I did wrong. Please. Please, don't, don't beat them up for it, in other words. Don't whip them for it. Don't punish them. And so, after God answered what he said, then the scripture says that he went to seek out a place where he could offer the Lord a sacrifice. I thought that would do a lot of people in, in this church some good if they did that. When you do wrong and know you did wrong, Offer the Lord a fasting sacrifice. That's what they don't like to do. So when I'm looking at this, he met Arono, um, and he said to him, I'm looking for a place that I can offer God a sacrifice because he stayed the hand of death. He gave his people a chance. So I need, a, I need a place where I can offer a sacrifice. But you know what? Arna said to him, well, I got a field here, and I'll read that scripture to you. And he said unto David, let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth, which, what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt sacrifice. And... Uh, And, and the threshing for instruments and other instruments of the oxen for wood. So all these things did Arna uh, as a king give unto the king. And Arna said unto the king, the Lord thy God accept thee. But the king said unto Arna, he said, but I will surely 
buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, of the which doth cost me nothing. No, I don't want you to give it to me. I think I should pay for it. I think that God has honored this. He, he forgave me. He forgave the people. He gave us a chance. No, I don't want to pay for it. I wanna, no, I don't want to have it for free. I want to pay for this. Listen. And he says, unto Arnaud, he said, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, of the which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. You know what, as many times as we pray, in most cases we are asking, we are telling God what we want him to do for us. We're not willing to put ourselves on the altar and say, God, here I am for you. What do you want to do with me? What way can I present myself to you? Very, very important. So when I look at that, I'm thinking, God, shouldn't we all say, what can I do? And I won't do it for free. I want to offer it up to you because you've been good to me. Let it cost me something, be it a fast, be it a more prayer, whatever it may be. I'm going to give you more because you've been good to me. So when I'm looking at that, I said, God, I will never come to you and ask you of anything that I'm not willing to pay the price. And everything has a price. Everything has a price. So you're not going to go anywhere with God until you learn that he don't owe you nothing. You owe him everything. He don't owe you. So David, no wonder <clears throat> he was the man that he was because he was a man after God's own heart. He would do it right. I am concerned that people don't do it right. They keep going in the wrong direction, doing things wrong, and they're offering this wrong stuff up to God, and God says, away with it. No, I don't want that. You've got to offer a sacrifice that God will accept. If he don't accept it, don't keep offering it up to him. You wonder why you come out of the prayer closet and you don't feel any different? Because what did you send up to God? What did you send up? What did you say to God? Lord, you know what? I want to give this to you. All we do, I want to know if God's going to do this for me and do that for me. I ask him, would he fix this? I ask him, would he do this? And we just ask, ask, ask. But we don't present anything. Quit asking for stuff that you're not willing to say, Lord, what does that cost me? I'm willing to do it. I'll do whatever it takes. The price is never too high. Never too high. I think... Peter said to him, Lord, what's in it for us? We gave up everything for you. What's in it for us? What he said to him, and I thought, he said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have? That's what man is. I gave you that. What am I going to get in return? We're always looking for a return, but we're not, re, re, never really investing an amount to get a return. Think about it. And, he said, and Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you also shall dwell, shall all, shall all of you, set upon there with me, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone that has, let me get my glasses looking right. And everyone that has, and everyone that has forsaken houses, brethren, sisters, or father or mother, 
or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit eternal life. I guess that shut Peter up. What are you talking about? This is all yours. It's all yours. He was getting a whole lot more from God than what he was getting. But it's going to cost you something to walk with him. Quit believing that I want to be saved. I just want to be saved. Yeah, but you got to pay a price. Salvation is free, but the thing that you have to pay for is the walk that you walk every day. So what do you do? Are you willing to deny yourself? He said, if any man come after me, he must first deny himself cross and follow me. You know what? I don't think we grasp what denial, self-denial is. That means if I don't have it, you got it. If I don't have it, God's got it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to be troubled about it. I am going to give my whole self. We want to give God a piece of us and expect a whole big payback. You're going to have to give him all of you. you got to forsake everything. We talked a little bit about that last night. God's going to require something of you. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to do what you know you should do? No, I'm complaining about, you know, here it goes again. You should never, ever take a moment to complain or feel irritated over a fast ever. Ever. We always want God to do all these things for us, but at the end of the day, well, he didn't do it. I don't know why he didn't do it. I talked to a woman in the prayer line this morning, and I said, what's wrong with you? She said, I'm mad at God. I said, mad at him about what? He took my baby. I said, how old was your baby? A newborn? I said, how do you know that God didn't save that baby from something down the road that's going to be horrible and took out of it? Why can't we trust God that he did the best thing? Whether I agreed with it or not, whether I liked it or not, he did the best thing for me. Yes. And I say all the time, I'm thankful, God, that you chose me. You didn't have to choose me. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know what an honor it is to be able that God would entrust his word into your hand. To your, this is sacred. This is power. This is something the Son of God has spoken to. And if he trusts you to carry that, do it with all your might. Quit begging for everything. We just beg, beg, beg. Well, you know, every time something come up, well, I, I told the Lord, I sure hope that you do this for me. I hope you do that. I need God to open this door. I need God to do this. What are you going to do? First, put something on the altar. Put something on the altar. If you give God the right thing and sacrifice, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. It cannot be. That's a fact. What are you willing to do? God, I'll do this. I'll do that. No matter what. And you continue to go and continue to do it. Let me tell you, it's going to be worth it if you're willing to give everything you got. Don't come to God and expect him to understand you above everything else. And, and I know I was telling God, I hope he understands. Are you kidding me? Oh, he understands who you are. He understands. I thought today as I was lying there in bed, I thought, Boy, Lord, you know what? If somebody told me the truth, I'm going to say thank you. Thank you. But you've got to have an appreciation for truth. That's why I said buy the truth and sell it not. You need to love truth. Because if you don't love truth, you're never going to love God. Because that's who he is. So if truth offends you, you're not going to make it. Because the truth cannot offend you. Because what offends you, you won't act on it. But I'm going with God no matter what it takes. I'm going to say what I need to say. 
He said, well, how much do I have to give up everything? You got to be willing to give up everything. Whatever it takes, I will give it. I don't want to know how much it costs. I don't want to need to know the price. God, this is what I want. You know, when you really want something bad enough and somebody tell you what the price is, you know what you say? I don't care what it costs. That's, I'm buying it. I'm going to get this. You say, well, you know what? That's expensive. I don't care. I'm going to buy it. You know what? That's because you want it. You got to want God so much until whatever it takes, whatever it takes, I'm, I'm taking it. Somebody walks up and says, well, if you take it, this is what's going to happen. I don't care. When I came to God, I didn't care what I went through. I didn't care what I had to suffer. I didn't care whether it was a good thing or bad thing. I just know I want God in my life. Yes. Listen to this. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, he said, he told you to follow him. Follow me. He never does anything like that. So he said, follow me. Okay, I'll follow you. I don't have to know where you're going. I don't know what road we're on. I don't know anything, but I'm, I'm willing to go with you. Because following him, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. He says, and he left all. He left everything. He didn't look back and say, can I take this with me? No. He left it all. Here I come. I give it to God. What do you want, God? Whatever you want, that's what I want. Whatever, God, you want me to touch, that's what I touch. If some place you want me to walk, I'll walk, God. I'll take it. I'm not concerned about it. People that are concerned about the price will never get to heaven. Because they want to know how much I, I can't. Get, I have to give up everything. If you got that question in your mind, you're not going. Because you're not going to go. I've watched this over the years. The people who who I've I've talked to about the Lord, uh, and the ones that said, "I want it, I want it," and I said, "Well, you know, such a, I don't care, but I want it. I want it. I'm not worried about the price." That's something I want. You know what? We don't want that from God. And if any price is on it, we don't want it. Do you know what? God wanted to reconcile man to him. Listen to this. He wanted to reconcile man to him. You know what? It cost him something. It cost him his son's life. That was all he had. He had to give everything. He gave the only begotten son. There wasn't anybody else. I give my son. And the scripture Isaiah says, the Lord, it pleased him to bruise his son. Why? Because of what it was going to give him in return. I'm going to be reconciled with man. I'm going to be able to fellowship with him. We're going to have a great life. This is what I, I made him for. This, I made him for me. And now the devil will do every, everything possible to take him away. Now, I tell you what, I just like to have him back. You know, he had to love us a lot to put his son through that. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and watched them crucify him. And not one time did he draw back from it. Jesus didn't draw back because he loved his father. When he went to the garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. He began to feel the pressure, the load of what he was under. Your sins and my sins. So now he said, okay, Father, if it be your will, let this pass. But he was quick to go back and say, nevertheless, because I know how bad you want this, and I'm going to give it to you at whatever cost I must pay to watch him being crucified and nails put in his hands and spear in his side and, and stripes on his back and 
What a horrifying picture. But that's okay. I'm going to be reconciled with man. That's why if you don't serve him, you're going to hell. He paid the ultimate price. He didn't say, how cost me? I need somebody that can reconcile me with my people. And he got it. But what cost? God paid for you. Did you deserve it? No. But he paid for you. I want to I wanna somehow give you, I want to give you all another chance. And then he gave him a chance and he still won't do right. Well, you know one thing? God's giving him a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. Just keep it, giving him another chance. And we just play that game until it runs out. Well, I know God will forgive me if I do it anyway. I just, I know he will. Yeah, he will. When do you stop doing it? When do you stop playing the game? When do you say, for God I live, for God I die? Why do you continue to go there? So likewise, whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So if you got anything you holding on to because you want to hold on to this, and God said if you hold on to it, you can't be my disciple. What is it that you holding on to that you won't let go so that God can do what he needs to do? What is it? Ask yourself. Why is it that I can't progress? Why is it that I can't move to the place I really want to move to? What is it? It's all about what you're not willing to do for. You're willing to do for it, you can get anything from God you want. He will withhold no good thing from us. He promised that. Well, if he promised that, why am I not willing to do whatever it takes to get it? I there is nothing he could ask of me that I wouldn't be willing to do. Thank you, God. Thank you for believing that I do it right, yes, yes. and I will. I was talking to somebody this week. I said, God made me a steward right, yeah. over the blessings of God. Yeah. They're not for you all, Rose. They're for different people, different needs. You must be there at that time. You must be willing to give it when you don't even have it. You got to make a, com com a, a complete sacrifice to do it. It ain't there. Are you willing to do it? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, Lisa been taking Sharon uh, to look for a house. And I said, and she told Lisa, well, no, I can't afford it. I said, Sharon, 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 you can afford it. You know why you can afford it? Because you sold good and good's coming back to you. What do you mean? When you sow good, you can have it. Quit wanting something you didn't sow one seed to get it. And that's so common among the people of God. We beg for everything, we give nothing. We give nothing. I told Sharon, I said, no. Make up in your mind. I'm going to get the house I want. Don't come talking about it. that's too high. Get the house you want. Amen. You know why? Because you've been faithful to God. Amen. You've done what he told you to do. You haven't held back anything. You've been faithful all this time, and now you want a house where you can settle down in and you can't have it? Yes, you can. Amen. You can have it. I said, go after it, Sharon. Go after it. I was prepared in here in my own mind. If she needs some help on that house, I'll help her. I'll help her. If God, if God wants to help, if God wants to use me to help her to have what she, uh, what she wanted, I'm going to do it. Because I'm thankful that she's been faithful. I'm thankful that she showed love to this pastor. I am thankful that she never held back. Yes. And I told, told Lisa, I said, did y'all find it yet? But Sharon said she don't know about that one. I said, Sharon, pick what you want. Don't worry about how much that payment going to be. Don't even think about it. Just move on it. See, won't God prove himself to you? We get so many things 
We get so many things we don't get due to the fact we don't believe God can do it. I believe if I can, he can. For sure. He can do it. What are you talking about? I can't believe people sit back and say, well, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Do what God tells you to do. Go after it. If you've done what was right, when you come into the presence of God, there is not one petition that you can put before him that he won't answer. For a fact, he'll do it. Because you give me joy. You satisfy what I want. It ain't about you. That's why we don't get things done. You always act like it's about you. Everything that comes in your hand is not about you. It's got something to do with God putting it there and that rose go over here and take care of that. And I don't hold back. I thought, wow. Thank you, God, for trusting me. He did it because he trusts me. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all, he cannot be my disciple. You say, now I don't mind giving up something. You have to give up everything? Yes. Why not? He gave up everything. He gave his life. Why can't you do the same? No greater love than this. Then a man lay down his life for his friend. No greater love than that. Sure, I'll do it for you. Sure, I'll help you. I said to somebody the other day, I said, put that over there. Somebody's coming with a need. I didn't say, this is what I've been waiting on. I said, go downtown and get me something. Because I ain't going out to get nothing. I get something to be over the internet. But it ain't about it ain't about Rose. This is about God and his people. I am, I said to this person, I said, I asked the Lord for years, let me be your hand extended. Reaching out to the oppressed. Let me touch you that I might touch them. Without a doubt. Come on. I'm going to do it. Ask of me. Ask of me anything, God. If nobody else will go, I'll go. If nobody else wants to say yes to you, I will. Come to me. Ask me. Surely I will do this, what you want me to do. When I look at people get uh, irritated because somebody told them the truth and and. And, and telling they say, well, it really ain't like that. It is like that. It is like that. <laughs> Nothing is worse for you than for God to send a word. And you say, that's not true. God ain't never lied. God is not man that he should lie. <laughs> Nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, it's what he said it is. I don't care whether you agree with it or not. God said so. If he said so, it is what it is. Long time ago, when I first got saved, and the Lord, <clears throat> he would talk to me and show me things, and, and um, I didn't know. Uh, I always wanted to be sure it was God. It's what... Uh, Kirk said to me the other day, he said, Mama, this man was sitting in the prison, and I remember you talking about this look on somebody's face. He ain't been in church. He ain't been here for 20 years. He said, I remember what you said. He said, when I looked at this man, Mama said, that's a look of death. Yes. And he, and he said, Lord, now I don't want to go over and tell that man this and this man, and it ain't true. But I'm going over here because God said so. He went over to the man and said, you better give your life to the Lord. You don't know when you're going to die. It's uncertain. Time is of the essence here. So whatever is going on, this is what's about to happen. You say, well, it don't even look like it's going that way. Well, it, it, I, I was thinking, no, that, that's nothing wrong with that. You are so out of it. So out of it. 
I'm thinking, who made you to see what God sees? That's why he, he brings it to us and show you, and then now you tell my people. They ain't going to, he said, they don't like me. When he sent the prophet to him, he said, they're not going to hear you because they don't hear me. But tell them anyway. You deal with it. Listen. Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and the world to come, life everlasting, if you're willing to do it right? I live every day with full knowledge that any day could be my day, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm tired of this life. This life. Sometimes I, I look up to the Lord and say, you know, I would like to tell you to come and get me, but I don't want to pray against your will, but God, I'm tired. I'd like to go home. I'm worn. 40, almost 50 53 years in this war. I ain't lost nothing. I won every battle. Yeah. I'm so glad that I have something to look forward to. You're not wanting to go home because, number one, you're not ready anyway. I don't want to die. If that's my way to the kingdom, oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. See? Paul said, you know what? I counted everything I thought was important to me. I counted all that stuff as dung, nothing. It meant nothing. I'm giving, I'll give it all up, God. I don't need all this education I think I got. Because when you come in the presence of God, your education means nothing. I tell, somebody said, well, you know, I got my degree and I was asking the Lord, forget it. That's not what he's moving on. So give me ignorant, un un unlearned men that said yes to God and they became great in their day. To this day we read their scriptures and how they stood up and stood for the right thing. I can't imagine what it would be like to leave from here to go there. You know, every day you think about it. Lord, wish it was over. Wish it was over. But it's not. I get tired of looking at bulldogs who fight the truth who don't want truth, leave me alone. You shouldn't have came in here. You think I'm going to be quiet? The devil attacked me this morning in the pulpit, and I told Mont and Michelle and, and P, I said, since I can't talk loud up here to the devil, I need y'all to get him. Suddenly. From the waist down, felt like lead. Couldn't even move it. But I got to move it. But I got to move it. If you think for a moment, you can attack me and I'm staying down, think again. Think again. God is the one that gets me up. God is the one that makes the difference. God is the one to say, walk, Rose, walk. Said, I'm tired of Rose. Well, I'm tired of you, you lying hound dog. I'm sick of him. I'm not going to shut up. I take great pleasure in defeating you. Because you defeated so many people. I thought, no. I'm not one to give up. And I don't like people that give up either. Since when do we become the, I mean, the devil makes the call. No. God makes the call. Yes, yes. Told me, look, go and preach the gospel. 
Each Paul told Timothy, be instant, in season, out of season. No matter whether they want to hear it or not, preach it. Put it out there. It's ugly. It is what it is. And I mean with everything in my being, no matter what, it, what the price may be, I'm going to continue. I will preach this gospel to the last breath. I will not give up. Knowing this now that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. I'm not a slave to sin. You still sinning? You need to get right. You need to be empowered. That I'm, I'm a sweet person. I'm a humble person. I'm walking before God in humility. Not thinking I'm anything. How in the world can any of us think we're anything when only God can do what's being done here? Listen. Mortify your members. We don't want to do that. Which are upon the earth fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and lasciviousness, which is idolatry. Let all that alone. Don't hold on to nothing. A little man said to me this morning, I couldn't hear him real clear what he said because he was talking so low. And he said, Sister Rose, he said, uh, he act like a, a psychic. Uh, I send things out and I can get to people. I said, really? Yeah. He said, I tried to get to you, but I couldn't get in. He said, I started thinking, maybe that's because of the power of God in our life. I said, you got it, baby. Nobody walks up in here. No. He said, uh, I think you're a prophet. I said, leave me a Sister Rose. I like that. I don't have to be anything else. When I talked to the guy from Denver the other day, and he just sat there and stared and stared. And the more he stared, the longer I talked. It's like, oh, what is this I'm hearing? They don't hear about God. People don't talk about him. That's why I said one who's doing our statue, I thought, you became inquisitive. I want to know, why don't nobody talk about him? Why don't nobody, they want to push him in the background. They don't, want to, they don't want to even acknowledge him. They don't want to in any way uh, represent him, talk to him. He said, I, I became puzzled about that. And I began to dig and dig and dig until I found some, enough information to know God gave it to that man because he went after it. He sought after it. This is what I want. You know what's amazing? Nobody wants to come to God and continue to come to him and take what he has and say, I'll run with it. I say, I'll run with it. Kirk called the other day and said, Mama, he said, this thing is in here is moving so fast. I said, God ain't slow. He's getting his business done. The script, the script, I mean, the, the scripture says that uh, the king's work requires haste. Get it done. We sent for 70 cards to the prison. They want it so fast. We sent another 70 cards to the prison. They went fast. How is it that men that's in the prison, for if they did wrong or they did not do it, that when they see this, they're touched by what is this? It's like they just understood it was Jesus. And this is what he did for me? We sent 90 more. And he said to me, Mama, these people keep coming back. You have another picture. This is not just a picture. This is the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is moving on these people. 
They want to know about him. And, and Kirk said, Mama, they be asking me so many questions. That's good. You're the voice for God. I'm the hand for him. Give it everything you got. See, we can have anything that God's got if we're willing to pay the price for it and don't even ask him for it if you're not willing. I'll do it. I want to. Whatever you say, God, that's what I'll do. This is the life. There's no life like this. It's amazing. I said I was yesterday finishing up on the message and I, I'm looking at the clock. And looking at the clock, I got to hurry up. I got to pray. I got to talk to him. I got to be sure I talk to him. And the whole time I was trying to do this and, and, and I'm still looking at the clock and I got to hurry up. When I finally finished, I sit over to the side. I said, I love you, God. I love you. I owe you everything. You don't owe me nothing. I know I owe you everything. Nothing belongs to me. Everything you ever gave me was yours. F.C. Barnes sings the song. He says, what shall I render to God? For all that he's done for me. Then he says, uh, everything I give to you, you give it back to me. So true. So true. If I give it to you, you, you give it back. How is it that God says, I want you to sacrifice yourself, and I want you to give your life and, and go through whatever you have to go through. I'll be there with you. I'll be there. And then... We still look at him like we'd rather not be like that. I don't care what it takes. Whatever it takes. God needs some people to say, you know what, Lord, what it, if it costs me my life, so be it. If you lose your life for my sake, you will find it again. I'm going to find it. I'm not concerned. Whatever comes, it comes. But I just want to be sure I get the message across that God is real and he loves his people. Yeah. Yes. I feel like there's never, never too much. Mom said to me, Mom, that's why God gazed you in your fasting because I'm driven by the point that it's never enough. Never. I see the time I came off 30 day fast and I said to the Lord, I still feel like I haven't done nothing. It seems small. What else can I render to you for all that you've done for me? You didn't owe me anything. You're not in my debt. I'm in yours. You went to Calvary for me. For me. You didn't owe me that. You suffered like that for me. And I didn't know, and you didn't know it. You didn't have to give it. But he did. You gotta understand something. This is the pearl of great price. It can't be measured in dollars and cents. It's bigger than that. I am thankful to God. You should be. You should be saying, God, make me like you so you can use me so I can be a blessing to somebody. Yes. This woman, listen to this. She comes to him, the mother, the mother of Zebedee's children, with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Grant thee, grant that th these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. And Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. 
Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? And to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, we are able. Oh, no, you're not. How many times? He said, oh, I, I can do it. They're not going to, though. He said, can they drink of the cup of suffering? They want, you want me to put one of your sons on the left and the right? It's not even mine to do that. But if I was to do it, can they drink of the cup? The cup of suffering. What he went through. Can he drink of that? Because if he can't, and we too quick to say, I can do it. No. You got to sell out. You got to sell out everything. I don't care about nothing. The only thing that matters in this life is whether or not I'm pleasing him every day. Yeah. Nothing else really matters. At the end of the day, at the end of your life, what you've done for him is going to make a difference. What you leave behind in this world is going to make a difference. But if you can't shine, if you can't be a light, if you can't take a stand when everybody's saying just the opposite, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. No, no. Say it, Rose. Say it. I'm going to say it. Don't even care whether you like me or not. Listen, you can't afford, you can't go through what I just went through. It's amazing what people think they can do when they can't do it. Because you ought to know who you, not ought to know who you are. You should know. I went home today and I said to the Lord when I was preaching this morning, at times I drew a blank. Did I laugh? I said, I'm gonna preach it. I don't care how many blanks you come with. Amen. I'm gonna sign on a dotted line. Amen. Yes. I'm not gonna give up. I got in this race to win, to finish it. Not starting out and talking a bunch of talk. I hear more people talking like they're going to go to this great place. You have to pay the price to get there. Yes. You can't get there otherwise. I believe I can handle this. I believe I can do that. Yeah. But are you going to do it? You hear a lot of people do a lot of talking, but nothing's to it. That, that's, that's, what's, that's what doesn't count. So, you know what? You look at Ruth and... And uh, her sister-in-law, Naomi said, since both men have been killed and the girls' husbands were in war and they were killed, uh, why don't you return to your family? And over, that's what she did. She turned back and went back home. And Ruth said, where you live, I live. Where you die, I die. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. I'm not leaving. Now, somebody else wants to come along and get the blessing that Ruth got, but she, she gave up everything. She gave up her family. Everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on this road. See? And then she got rich. When they went back there, they were poor with nothing. She got rich spiritually, and she got rich in the natural because she ended up with Boaz as her husband, who was a very wealthy man. She didn't go back home. Boaz wouldn't have been at home. You got to go where Boaz is. You got to go where the blessing is. That's why some of you don't get blessed because y'all in the wrong place, going the wrong direction. It's sad to me. I have to be careful every day that I do nothing to offend them, to disappoint them. The message I want to preach in the, in, the, in the future is the most disappointed person in the world is God. 
I gave everything to you. You don't want me to have nothing. You can't serve me because your husband don't want it. Your wife don't want it. Forget that. I don't owe them. I owe God more than anything. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? He said, you got to sell out. Get rid of everything. Take all your riches and sell it, the stuff and give it to the poor. He really wanted to do it at that moment until you asked me to pay the price. I'm not paying the price. I'm not doing it. No matter what happens, I'm not doing it. You, God's looking for some people that say, for you I live, for you I die. I'm never leaving you. And I don't plan to disappoint you any time in my life. I don't want you waiting for me to come and pray and talk to you and then I pass you by. No. I cannot do it. I can't do it. You got to love him enough. The rich young ruler went away very sad. No doubt that some of you would do the same thing. But he said, I can't do that. What is it in your life that you can't do? for him after what he did for you. Stop for a minute. Ask yourself, do I really love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? Is he number one in my life? He's not second to nothing and nobody. It's not happening. No. No. I said, you got to be ready to leave all of it. Everything behind, whatever that is, that may have seemed important. So Paul said, I counted what I knew and the education I gained, I counted it as dumb. Because it ain't worth nothing. It has no value. And ask yourself. God, when you look down here, I want you to say, if you needed something, go get Rose. She'll do it. She'll say it. She'll live for it. She won't disappoint me. And I won't. Yes. You got to understand, we're so full of ambition. We want all this to happen, that to happen, all these things. At the end of the day, what did you make happen for God today? What did you make happen? Did you look up and say, I just want to say thank you? The song that, that Dottie Rambo say, I didn't come here to ask you for nothing today, God. I just come to say thank you for what you've already done. You don't owe me nothing. Couldn't do it. I tell him, I say, you know, a lot of people, they don't treasure what they have. I treasure what I have. I went through a lot. And yet when I compared to him, it was nothing. Consider Jesus. At least you become weary and faint in your mind. Don't go to God always wanting something. See what you can leave with him. When you go to prayer, what can you leave with him? That he was glad you came today. He was glad you talked to him. Because they reject him every day. I said, God... No wonder the, the father set the just judgment and he's not going to change it. And he shouldn't. You're going to get, you shortchange God, if you will. We always shortchange in him. Well, I didn't pray the way I should have done today, but you know, I'll catch up tomorrow. No, I need you to come every day like that. Every day. Boy, I wouldn't, if you ever. Get to this place where you can touch God in such a way, but never be the same. No such thing as failing. No such thing as coming short. No. He's my life. He's the reason I get up every day. He's the reason I breathe. I couldn't do nothing without him. 
everything in me. He says, I love him too much for that. God was looking for a relationship with you and me, the whole world. To this day, they don't want it. They don't want it. Listen, to give God less for what his value is and what he possess, I give you less. Give him what he deserves. Quit making excuses why you didn't do it. You're looking for somebody and say, I don't have an excuse. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I just want a, re a relationship with you. How disappointed he was when he went to the Garden of Eden and he said, Adam, Adam, where art thou? Where you at, Adam? I just want a fellowship with you. I made you so I have somebody that I could have a relationship with. Where you at? They're in a place they should have never been. They left the place where they once met with him in the, in the garden in the cool of the day. He has to come in and say, where are you? I said to God one day, when I was looking at that, I said, you'll never say, Rose, where are you? Never. I will die in this place. I owe you my life. You didn't owe me nothing. I owe you everything. No, no. You'll never come looking for me and I'm not there. It can't happen. Because whatever you want to do, uh, spend time with me, maybe just to love on me. He already said he loved us. He already said it. If you'll die for a person, you got to love them. Otherwise, you won't. Quit shortchanging him. Giving him a little something, expecting everything big to come back. If you sow uh, sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. You sow abundantly, you're going to reap abundantly. We always want, I want this big thing. What did you put into it? What kind of seed did you plant? What kind of time did you take with him? Not a few minutes. If you really love him, you want to be with him. I love being with in his presence. Love talking to you. Where would I go? If I didn't have it, this is my life. This is why I keep living every day. This is why no matter what comes or goes, yes, God. You got to get to the yes point. Whatever I have to do. That's what I do. Tired, worn, yes, but I must do it. I must give it everything I got. You got to do the same. He deserves it. We're shortchanging him. You know what? You got to understand that I'm looking for somebody that I can count on. That's what I said to this person yesterday, and I wanted to help them. And, and they said, I've never seen it on this fashion before. And I say, but I am his steward. What he put in my hand, I must give it to you. It's not about. It's about him, how much he loved me, he cared for me. When he looked down and said, look, Rose is doing what I expected her to do. I couldn't have a good life without it. See, David had a, a heart after God. He was always, you will never find any place in the word 
Well, there's nobody that spent that much time praising God as David. Every day, every day. I'm so thankful as I look back. I say, God, thank you for being with me. I still say in prayer, thank you for not letting me die in my sins. I could have been lost. But you saved me when I didn't even know I wanted to be saved. Thank you for keeping it there. Thank you because I could have went to hell already. Thank you for bringing me out and giving me a mind to do it right. How blessed I am. How blessed you can be. If you want to be successful with God, you got to make him first. He's got to be the most important thing in this world. You got to understand sometimes Make it a point. No matter what happens tomorrow, make it a point. I got to spend time with God and and really mean it. I got to spend time with God. I said, I got to talk to you. I want to hear your voice. Come. Give everything I got. Come on. I look at people and sometimes I wish that I could become more than just one person. So God, those that are not following you, I could please make up for. Cut up. But since I can't do that, I'm going to give you everything I got. And God, I repent for the ones who won't give you the time of day. We need to turn it all around. Turn it around. Nothing is like loving him because he's going to love you back, and he's already showed you how much he loves you. I hope. You'll leave this church tonight and saying, you know what? I need to quit saying what I'm going to do. It's always what I'm going to do. It's not what I've already done and continue to do. you got to remember that. You're doing everything you want to do. He's watching you. He's there every day. Trying to show you how important you are to him. There's nothing like it. Boy, if, you, if God could give from people what he has given, this would be a beautiful world. They don't want to do it. They don't, they don't really say, he, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. I hope you, whatever places you failed in and haven't come up, Start going forward to the right place. And you want to come to the end of your life and not look back with regret? Thank God I finished my course. It laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Not only for me, but for all those that love his appearing. What must it be like? I can't comprehend it. To always be in his presence, never to leave. Because everything in this world is always something going on. Just be that I can't imagine heaven without a devil. A place of peace, happiness, joy. And I never despised your word. If it found me, so it found me. But I never, ever despised it. 
People don't want the word. Don't tell me that, Sister Rose. I don't want to hear it. Oh, really? Ask me, do I give a hoot? I don't care. When I go home tonight, me and Nisi do this a lot going home on Sunday night. I say, well, Nisi, we did it today. Did it again. And Lisa Nisi said, we did it again. I don't think you've done anything, but I did something. <laughs> yes. So when you go home tonight, before you shut your eyes, take a moment and say, God, I just want to thank you. I mean it from the depth of your soul. I just want to thank you for all the good things you've done for me. The times when I could have been snuffed out, you took care of me. The times when I didn't know danger was around the corner, you took care of me. Think about it. And rest assured, if God sees fit to call anybody else into the ministry, give it everything you got. Be the best of the best. And you can be. I hope that you'll take this message and let it change your life. But I, I'm going to, I'm going to do better. I don't want to hear. Well, I'm going to do it. Do it. You know, you haven't lost anything. We just gain and gain and gain. That's what he does for us. He keeps on giving. It's the gift that Brenda sings sometimes. It's the gift that keeps on giving. He gave his life, and it's the gift that keeps on giving. You think the man gave his life? What else is there for him to do? He keeps on giving. Giving you another chance that you rightfully do not deserve because he loves you. He cares about you. Sometimes I take a moment to think about the people in this church that he almost took away. Somehow, by the grace of God, he was standing there saying, I'll give you another chance. Yes. My blood, the man, he didn't let teardrops fall. You know what? I know he'd find joy, find joy in every tear that I shed. Oh, seeing I'm glad, I'm glad the man didn't make heartaches. Cause I know he'd give me more. He'd give me more than I could bear. Oh, seeing I'm glad the man, he just, he didn't create me. 